Welcome back to Longhorn Weekly with Rick Barnes. Joined now by our, one of our special guests tonight, special assistant for Longhorn Basketball, William Wyatt, former Longhorn player, went out into the business world and then decided that the basketball passion wasn't out of your blood. Let's, let's kind of start with your decision to get back into basketball a few years ago after being in the, in the corporate world. Yeah. Um, you know, the interesting thing about it was um, while I was working, one of the things I did almost basically as a volunteer was coach on the high school level. And uh, just always had a passion for coaching, but also had an affinity love for commercial real estate, what I was doing at the time. And so uh, thankfully I had some, some bosses that you know, had, gave, me, gave me some time to go out and do that. And uh, you know, just adjusted my time schedule, but um, it was fun. I enjoy coaching, I enjoy um, helping kids understand the game better. I think it's, it's taught me a lot. Um, basketball's taught me a lot. Things I've went through, things I've gone through, and it's an opportunity for me to share in uh, those life lessons that have uh, actually helped me in the business world a lot. Well, let's backtrack. You come into UT, 1999, out of South Grand Prairie. Mm -hmm. First of all, the decision to play for the Longhorns and a relatively new coach here at Texas and, and Rick Barnes. What went into your decision? Well, I saw Coach when he was at Clemson. So, you know, uh, he had some big bruises, some tough guys at Clemson. Uh, I'm not sure if Coach was aware at the time. Clemson was sending me letters and so forth, so I was watching. I think during a, a period of time, Coach had got, they had got up to number one, number two in the, in the country. So I was, I was definitely paying attention to him. And Clemson had a good architectural program at the time. So I was, and there was a guy, I can't remember the guy's name, but he was pretty good. And uh, he was doing architecture. So I was paying Paying attention, and it just so happened coach came to Texas, and uh, I started looking a little bit, and then start uh, researching the academic side of uh, of everything because academics was a big part of my family. Uh, I prided myself on that uh, growing up as a kid, and and so when he came here, it just it, it made some sense to pay attention, and obviously I'm here now. Well, you were fell victim to the injuries, which uh, did yeah. so many. Uh, so many times we see that, but so many times we don't see is what you did in the classroom, and, and you got your degree and had something to, to do after basketball. Did you know that you know, the knee issue could be something that could curtail, curtail your career? I did. I mean, uh, I tore my ACL meniscus my junior in high school, and um, you know, it's one of those things where you just you don't think it can ever happen to you. Um, you know, people tell you it's important to get an education, um, and a lot of athletes and my peers don't really take it seriously. Seriously, but thankfully, I'm competitive in every part of my life, and my my parents instilled in me that academics is important regardless, and that one day the ball is going to stop bouncing. And so I just took it seriously, and uh, and when that happened, you know, it, things start. You know, it, it's difficult. You know, trying to adjust and life isn't the same. You know, you can't move around the same way on the court and, and uh, you invest so much time in it. It's, it's hard when things aren't the same, but uh, thankfully I had something to fall back on with academics and, and um, you know, when you keep playing and you're trying, you, you begin to realize, even though other people, you begin to realize that, man, hey, this, I have a short window and enjoy it. And, um, and, and so I, d I tried to do that to the best of my ability, give myself a chance to get healthy, but it just didn't, didn't work out for me. But thankfully, I had other things to fall back on. Well, you play two years, make the decision, and then T.J. Ford comes in. You came in with some guys that were cornerstones of that Final Four team, Brian Bodiger, James Thomas. What was it like to still be a part of the program, the Sweet 16 run, and then, of course, the next year, the, the Final Four run to New Orleans? It was a great joy for me because at the time when it came to hosting recruits, I was one of the main hosts. So, I mean, it came down, I hosted Royale, T.J., um, all those, I mean, a lot of those guys, AJ that came, I mean, it was, there was a lot of guys that during that time that had a chance to, um, you know, show them what Texas was all about. And um, PJ Tucker, all those guys. And so um, even though I wasn't a part of it on the court per se, uh, it was fun to be a part of it. I remember Coach Barnes coming into uh, my house on, his, on, on the home visit and uh, what he's guaranteed we would do is we'd go to the Final Four when I was you know, during my time here. And uh, we did that. 
And it was great to know that you're a part of hosting something like TJ Four. He's got his number retired now. I call him like my little brother. Um, talk to him a lot. Um, it's just fun to be a part of people's success and and uh, and having them have that success here at Texas. We'll bring Coach in in a minute, but now as a special assistant, what are some of your duties day to day? Uh, you know, most of my duties right now are on the operational side. So uh, Jerry Johnson's our director of basketball operations right now. So I assist him in, in a, f a few areas, where, whether it be game day, uh, things that go on with host, you know, recruits coming in, um, whether it be uh, community service work to making sure guys are in class. I mean, it's there's a, a long list, a litany of things that you go through that um, that you really don't think about when running a basketball program. Most of the time you're thinking about just on the court stuff and Coach Barnes does his deal there. But there's a lot of other things that go uh, into the equation of being an a athlete here at UT. And uh, I, I take care of those. It's kind of like we were just talking with Coach about when you're a kid, all you think is about shooting the ball. Right. Then you get to this level, oh, there's a lot more to make me a successful player. There's a lot more, and uh, there's a lot of effort in other, other areas. And so, um, you know, and a big part of what we do is, I mean, part of, I mean, it's difficult at times to, uh, what we do here. I mean, academics, um, there's a, uh, a standard of excellence. And there's pressures, and so you, part of it is making sure the guys' heads are on straight and, and uh, making sure that uh, families know what this is about. I mean, so there's other pieces when you think about a program, and we talk about family. It really is a family, and it, many times it's extended. Uh, meaning that uh, I mean, friends, family, they, they want to know that this is the right place for this, their son and, and uh, we do the best we can in every area where it comes down to former players uh, leaving and, and ha feeling, ho feeling at home when they come back. That all goes into uh, what we do, whether it be recruiting, et cetera. It, it's all important and can't get overlooked and, and uh, I try to help in those areas. We'll, we'll bring in Coach Barnes right after this, continue our conversation with Special Assistant William Wyatt. This this is Longhorn Weekly on the Longhorn IMG Radio Network and on Longhorn Network. We bring in head coach Rick Barnes. William Wyatt continues to join us here. And uh, Coach William said he had an, his eye on you in high school when you were coaching at Clemson, so it just worked out nice. He didn't have to travel halfway across the country to play. Well, you know, it's really inter interesting when we got to Texas. The one thing that we knew we wanted to do was establish relationships with in-state coaches and, and programs and Mike Kunstadt who still uh, back then and even still today does a great job scouting high school players and he and that's what he does and he's and he's terrific with his camps and the way he puts together his his organization he had told me he said there's a there's a young man who he said is a great young man but he got hurt and he said uh, he, he had torn his ACL and he said I'm telling you this guy has everything you'd want when you're starting to build a program. He's got character. He, he's going to work hard. And uh, he was talking about Will Wyatt. And when I went up to see Will uh, the first time, he really, to meet him, he wasn't playing. He had not come back from his injury yet, but uh, talked to the coach. And obviously the coach echoed those same type things. And then once you got into, and you knew Will was going to have to do the rehab, which he was working on at that point in time. And but once you got in to know uh, Will, his family, his background, and everything that Mike had said from the beginning was true. And then obviously we uh, started recruiting Will. And the only other school at the time that I think had kind of stayed with him who had been recruiting, if I remember right, was Stanford. Mm -hmm. They had w w they were there because I know you did visit Stanford. But uh, ended up getting Will to come. And uh, he came and, um, again, had to work through, uh, again, some, some problems with his knee. But... I tell players today that Will Wyatt to this day is the best post, low post defender we've ever coached. He did it technically uh, by you know, technique. He wasn't the, the shot blocker type uh, post player, but he did it by just uh, determination and hard work. And uh, so uh, we're excited to have him back because he has done a great job of uh, really building back uh, – the alumni, I mean, he's really getting them back involved. And we mentioned uh, a week or so ago on, the sh on this show that, uh, in the TV show, that it'd be a great goal if we could uh, endow our scholarships for a basketball program and, and get full participation from every player that we could possibly reach out to. And Will's done a great job with that. Will also 
the fact that you played, you got Chris Ogden on the staff, Jay mm-hmm. Lucas. How much does that help, do you think, for players to maybe pick your brain a little bit because you've been in the wars here at the Irwin Center with UT? You know, um, it definitely helps, you know. Um, you know, we know Coach. We, we know what he means. Uh, we have a, a, a deeper perspective than they, they do, meaning they're in it. So sometimes Coach could get on you and you just don't know what he's – but we've been in it. We know the result of it. And, uh, and we just know – and from this side, because we, we were in coaches' meetings, we understand what he's trying to get to even better now as – on staff than we did as players. And so it's one of those things where it's, it's helpful for us to communicate what he's trying to get to even better because, um, you know, because it's just, just a different perspective. And so um, it's definitely beneficial at, t- at times. And I think even as on staff, I think we appreciate Coach Barnes even more um, for who he is and the coach he is because, man, the, the, the dude knows the stuff. Now, when you're playing, you're like, come on, coach, man, what's going on? You know, why are we doing this, man? I I see this, I see this. But the reality is, man, he's been doing this for a long time. And uh, he he understands where he's getting to. There's a, you know, like football, there's a a plan. You know, you got to go from first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and there's there's always a thought going going into it. And uh, one thing I do appreciate about coach, he's his own man. You know, he, he listens, but, man, the dude knows what he's talking about. Coach knows what he's talking about, and you get a better sense of that um, when you're playing, and it's easier to get that point across to players because now you you remember it as a player. You remember the, and then we had good results going to the Final Four, Sweet Sixteens, and stuff. It's easier to communicate to the guys earlier that that you need to be paying attention. One thing that Will did, and I will say, Roger, I think that he got as much out of his education at Texas because Will was involved across campus and that's been a great help through recruiting and you can talk about that a little bit how you really took full advantage of your time here well uh you know the the thing i was afforded when i was you know uh went away from i guess this full-time practice all that stuff as a player was i was able to do things like recruit for the business school um i, I did some other special guest things um uh, as a host, I remember the one time with Spike Lee, he came through. It's, it's, but the biggest thing was just being exposed to some other things. Uh, I actually ran for uh, a, a student body position. Uh, actually, that's kind of how Augie met his wife, was through me. Mm-hmm. Um, he actually owes me that. But uh, <laughs> but it's just, it exp- you know, you, you, and the thing about UT, man, it is unbelievable. The resources here, the, the, the people that walk this campus are truly um, exceptional. Um, not just in you know, athletic side, I mean, academically. I mean, they're exceptional. And to be able to tap into that even more um, was something I, uh, I, I really uh, am thankful for. And it's helped me in my career. It's helped me uh, even, you know, here and coming back, being able to talk to different, play, you know, departments and such uh, to help benefit the basketball program. Well, we appreciate your, your visit. I'm sure Coach has got something for you to do, so we'll, we'll turn you loose. But we appreciate you spending some time with us. Will Wyatt, Special Assistant, thank you. Appreciate, appreciate it. it.